won't want to miss this. I'm having a hot flash. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, thank you. 15 minutes before 12 o'clock, beautiful Monday. I finally got it right. I've been saying it's Friday all day long. Uh, But it is Monday, and it is beautiful out there. And the weather, man, says don't worry about the rain. It doesn't say any mention of rain at the forecast right now, so I guess we don't have any rain. All right, I do have a fun topic, though. It is uh, June, uh, June, what is it? today june june 11th right june 11th so uh we're going to talk to joe it's midday with joe and we're going to find out what years he right. he was hot stuff right. all right so hey let's joe. get this straight today is monday not Friday. It is Monday. <laughs> I keep saying Friday. That's the first thing we get. So today. what years? Second day. Second thing. I've never had any hot streak. <clears throat> you never had a moment. Come on, in your life, there I must bet have you been. Did. Oh, I've seen pictures of you. You mm-hmm. when you were younger. You didn't have uh, a year or two when you were hot stuff. Nope. Come you were on. a biker. You were a biker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All bikers are. How, hot stuff. You just being modest, I think. Yeah, I think so. I don't kiss and tell. <laughs> Figure that one out now. So so wait so wait a minute. Wait a minute. I like little Larry says. Oh, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you don't want to talk about yourself. How about um? Have you seen uh, Dan? Dan's going through probably a hot stuff era right now for himself. He's a good looking guy. I'm not saying a He's damn a word. Let Dan talk about himself. What do you think? I'm crazy. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> He's a pilot. He drives a truck. You know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I see the I see the the women doing a double take with Alex. I know he's married and everything, but uh, I see the human reactions happening. I've oh, never certainly. had a double take except when we're walking away. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, wait, yeah. Yeah. And I saw with Robin's son too. We were we were at that thing medieval. What's that thing up in Gainesville? Yeah, medieval, medieval fair. fair. Oh yeah, and a little wench came up and she was rubbing her head on TJ. Remember exactly, that? Exactly, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she was. She yeah, was she was doing to... like a backwards thing, like hello, yeah. hello there, yeah. <laughs> hello. Well, how are you doing there? <laughs> so, oh yeah. So we were talking about uh, the 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 periods of time when you are hot stuff. You don't ever have you don't want to share that with us at all. Thirty, twenty, forty. 50, Do you think it 60, didn't happen yet? Maybe. It didn't happen yet. Hey, I like that. It didn't happen yet. <laughs> you were in the Navy. Yeah, People, the Navy. women like a man in uniform, too, so you were in the Navy. Yeah, no, I don't know. You're just thinking uh, one thing. Maybe maybe the radio voice, the radio persona. Oh, I've had calls about that. There yet. you go. Yeah, now we're hitting yeah. on it. So what, is that still happening to this day? Yeah. You, you yes. get the calls. Hello? Yeah, hello, how are you? I want to meet the guy with the voice. Right, but then they meet the, then they see the guy with the voice. <laughs> uh, and I never get a call back. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I remember I did a midnight show years ago. <laughs> and I was, I, and it was just a substitute. It was just a substitute for one evening from, I think it was like 10 to 3 or 10. It was midnight, a midnight shift, and the man didn't show up. And they just gave me an emergency call. And I went in. It was a one shot, never went back again. And this lady called in, and I said, Hello. She said, Hi. And, I, and she just, <laughs> and she was just. Uh, melting? Yes, melting. That's the word, melting. Well, see, on that the, on the hot phone. stuff makes things melt. That's what yeah, so when they hear the voice, they go, Oh. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me shift to the next part of this hot stuff conversation. Oh, thank goodness. Yes. It's it's about actors and actresses who you'd be surprised to know how hot they were when they were younger. Lucille Ball comes to mind. Well, she wasn't always a redhead. Remember that? I don't. I didn't her know that. Her hair is brown. But I've seen her old photos. And then she photos. went to blonde, and then she did the red. But she was very pretty when she was younger. Oh, she oh, was yeah. gorgeous. Yes. Outstanding. And she wasn't bad looking when she was on the I Love Lucy days, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, but well, I, she was hot. But I think uh, she was doing doing herself a favor to be, you know, well, funny, she, funny, whatever. She, uh, what, oh, I'm trying to, I'll, I'll paraphrase what she says. Uh, I can't do, I can't, I am not a comedian, but I can do funny. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. Something okay. like that. So <laughs> they wrote, they wrote the things, and you know, and she did it. But she was a very, very smart woman. So, and have you ever seen pictures? I'm sure you have. Betty White. Oh yes, she had her hot stuff years, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, she probably. Yeah. Had, I think women probably last longer in the hot stuff department, right? No, I, I don't she, think so. She's a spitfire because I got to work with her. She is a spitfire. Right. Yeah, what you see is what you get. It is double a ton. John Travolta. Hmm. 
Is he still going through his hot stuff years, or is he done? Who knows? I don't know. I think so. I think he's that would still be a, going That'd there. be a Robin question. Yeah. Okay. yeah, because his roles are geared for the age he is now. He's he's not trying to be so God, he, again. Yeah, so God, he's yeah. geared for well, that okay, particular age. If you age. want to go there, then there's uh, Claude Van Damme. And that poor guy is, he's trying to be, uh uh-huh. And to exactly. me, it, it, it's, he's, he's beyond his prime, quote unquote. He's so, a nice guy, I never, don't get me wrong. Have he had his hot stuff years? I think he did. <laughs> I think he did. But it, it's time where he should go for the different kind of roles, like Sylvester Stallone right. mm-hmm. and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And that's why the, the, the movies that they have made for them, Expendables 2, Expendables 1, yes. I think there's an Expendables 3 out on them. I know, think or, there is, yeah, 3. And it, it was. It was like a bunch of guys that did it. Now they're doing it again to to do what they had to do, got to do. But it's they, you know they they know they're they're beyond their prime, but they feel good, so they're going to do it some more, but not worry about it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I have I have some um, samples from the internet of actors who uh, were smoking hot when they were young. Okay. Actors or actresses? I don't know if there's any women on here. Peter. Oh, who wants to hear about that? Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole. <laughs> Uh, Peter, uh, he in his younger days he was uh, debonair. I would say, mm-hmm. yeah. I wouldn't call him handsome. I call him debonair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he had Robert, chemistry. Robert De Niro was the hot stuff when he was younger. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Robert De Niro. He yeah with his slick back hair. Yeah. Sean Connery. He aged gracefully. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. <laughs> Sean Connery. Uh, Ian McKellen. I like Sean Connery better as he got older than his than his his uh, sexiness. Like his very first James Bond movie, I think John. James Bond was a he was really acting in James Bond per se, and the other as he got in the oh uh, the something gentleman I can't think of the name of it. Uh, it was oh some, yeah uh, oh gosh what uh, is the name uh, of that uh, movie uh, yeah I can't I, I, um, big submarine in there and all that yeah yeah exactly and there was a, it was like uh, again ma- more mature mm-hmm. he was he like mature it was maturing almost to almost. To a mature John Wayne, kind of a yeah, yeah or she yeah, was sexy. Jeff as he Bridges, got older. look at Jeff Bridges now. Now right Jeff to Bridges, he, oh he got God. to the rough with the <laughs> oh beard God. and everything. Yeah, look at his. Oh, look at that. That's the one he was. Yeah, but, so, but his whoever his agent is, whoever is casting him now, they're casting him for what he looks like, not what he was. So mm-hmm. if you continue casting to go with your looks. Because this is Hollywood, let's face it. Exactly. I think, yeah, get that, will you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's important. Some phone's ringing here. Sorry. That's all right. Mine's still lit. Mine, light. My, my, mine might go off. Go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> James Earl Jones was a hottie when he was younger. He I've was? never seen him a hottie. I've seen him right in there. a lot of young pictures. Oh, there he is. But I never called him a hottie. I called him well, a you wouldn't. dignified. I wouldn't either. But mm-hmm. uh, dignified, yes. A good looking guy. Oh, Roger Moore. Look at him now. Oh, Roger Moore. Well, Roger Moore's dead. I hate to tell you that. You know, so he was. Well, no Did he die? So bad. No he so he bad. died? Roger Moore passed on last oh, year. Oh, okay. I didn't realize <laughs> no that. So Sir bad. Roger Moore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. He was knighted, too, by the Queen. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne, I guess so. I don't well, know. I don't know about Ozzy. Ozzy's he was like, wow. Yeah, he's way out there. <laughs> yeah, but he looked, he looked he looked too cool. girly when he was younger. Ozzy Osbourne, he looked too girly. I thought he looked too feminine. I don't know. When he was I younger, never, I, I I don't think he was hot. I don't. I've never you know stuff when he was younger. My kind of Hollywood guy was like John Wayne, <laughs> yeah, uh, even Bruce Willis. All right, now we Bruce got Bruce Willis one. is aged, but uh, he went to the bald head thing. Yeah, he did. And what happens is when you shave all your hair off, right. you don't age as old as. In other words, Yul Brenner was an old man playing in some in in uh, the Magnificent Westworld. Seven. You know, in, yeah, you know. yeah. But he was he was up in age back then. Mm-hmm. But because he shaved his head, it didn't look that he didn't look as old per yeah, se. Yeah, exactly. All right, women. Exactly. You want the women now? I always like to do women. Uh, <laughs> if the women. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. She still looks nice now. What's oh, she looks nice. I don't dig- know what again, she looked dignified. like before. Kirstie Alley. Oh, she yeah. Changed, yeah. But she I still she like has. her. She's 64, she's I guess. Pretty, yeah, yeah but she put on a lot of weight. Goldie Hawn. She puts it on. She takes it off. She puts it on. Goldie Hawn. I loved that girl when she was younger. <laughs> oh, she is she had, beautiful. Yeah, but she had work done on her, uh, in her, in her. I've seen the last movie she did, and it's like, oh, they just 
yeah. Yeah, no, you don't like that one. It's um, that's like know, uh, 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 <laughs> uh, Kenny Rogers when he uh-huh. got his work done on his face. Oh, like, he did. Sybil Shepherd. Oh, I didn't Sybil know Shepherd. that. <laughs> I have Boy. to look him up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sybil Shepard. No, she was gorgeous. Uh, she was, she she was, was hot. Uh, yes, she was hot. All these women still look good today. Meg Ryan is on this list? Yeah, but she had now, work Is that the one that too. did her lips and then finally they went down? <laughs> I don't know. Is that the one? that Was I, that one Seattle, yeah. Sleepless in Seattle or something she did? Yeah, that yeah, that was her. She was her. doing she, good. And she did. Somebody did the Botox on her lips and she looked like one of Remember <laughs> when you were a kid, you got those... Uh, plastic lips that you put oh, yeah. your, on your face. Uh, they uh-huh. were made. Of, I'm sorry, wax. They were made wax. of wax. That's what her lips look like. But now they went down and things. Back yeah, to I think she normal. ruined it when she was getting that Botox. But Jessica Lange still looks good. Oh, she Raquel was Welch hot. Still looks good. Raquel Welch. She's in her. She's in her. Madonna. Seventies. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> she is. Not a very good. Wh- one. Whoever did Ma- Raquel Welch. I mean, she did. One time, it came out good. Came yeah. out good. Yeah. Liza Minnelli. Well, you said Madonna. You passed over Madonna. Uh, well, we were talking about Raquel. She, yeah. Well, it depends yeah. on the photo. It's a photo no. Uh, no. Oh. What's the Italian The Italian lady? Sophia Loren. She has aged well. Yes. She's no work done on her at all. She I don't know. Beautiful. You don't know. Oh. But, yeah. yeah, but she but doesn't have Ma- that clown. And Margaret. No. Yeah. She no. looks really good. She, uh, she's had work done on her but On her butt. So, yeah, that too. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, she was in an accident, I remember, years ago when her oh. jaw broke in her. She fell off some stage or something. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But she's she's a sexy, dignified lady. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, she's really, really good. Yeah. Angela Lansbury. Look at that. She was the hottie when she was oh, young. Oh, when she was young. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She was beautiful with those curls in Sweeney Todd, too. She was really hot in Sweeney Todd, yeah. I think Angelica Houston looks better now than then. Angelica Houston. That's her then, and here's her mm-hmm. now. I, I think, don't I, know, I think the new looks better. Oh, okay. I don't know her. Jenna Jameson. Who? Jenna Jameson. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who, who? that is. <laughs> what, what does it she say? She looks the same, she... both there and then and now. Oh, well, you know. Well, she's still that I age. I no or? idea who no, she is. She... I don't know who she is. Next. Maggie Smith. You know Maggie? Maggie Smith? Oh, no. she's, she's definitely aged a lot. What is she playing? I don't know. I hear music, though. Is there Ice Cream Man coming? Oh, I wish Ice Cream Truck comes. Honey. <laughs> do you hear? <laughs> I do. Yeah. You know, well, there's still Ice Cream cup, Truck comes through my neighborhood? What really? Over the weekend, yeah. They didn't, uh, How do you stop it? Did you get anything? You walk out there and you go, hey, put your head up, <laughs> and it just stops. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a story about Vivian Vance, though. I guess there Who? was Vivian Vance. Oh, Lucille Ball. She, uh, Lucille Vance Ball. Vance from, from Connecticut. Yeah, yeah I, I, I had heard that once the... Um, uh, the casting guys decided to cast Vivian Vance as Ethel Mertz yeah. that Lucy thought she was too gorgeous and they had to downplay yes. yep. her looks because Lucy didn't want herself upstage but Exa- Vivian oh, yeah. was she couldn't, she couldn't make jokes or certain things yeah Lucy had to have yeah. the jokes from what I understand I heard yeah that's what I heard and her and that gentleman that played Fred Mertz they did not get along oh William Frawley they oh they didn't get along get along, along. Not get along. Oh. This is, again this is gossip over whatever but you know well, anyway, take so. it with a grain of salt, whatever that means, right? Take it with a grain of salt. So, if you don't want to answer, the question is: What, what years did you go through your hot year, hot stuff? I don't years? think I ever had hot, hot. Well, years. you don't have to answer. It's, a th- it's I, I came to the conclusion this is something nobody's going to really answer except for Robin. Yeah, my early thirties, <laughs> thirty to thirty-four. Robin knew. Robin knew I, just, she was I thought stuff. that was it. I've got see, I, see I, as a man, I don't know when I'm hot unless the woman tells me, hey, you're hot. That'll work for me, you know. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> oh, it gets you hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, that'll get you hot after, yeah. <laughs> hey, you, hey you know, hey, you want to, hey, yeah, come on, let's, okay. Uh. <laughs> Good like I always said, a man would love to get a woman in the mood and everything. But a woman <laughs> says, now the man jumps. Yes, I'm here, baby. I'm here. <laughs> But a woman, you've got to finesse in 10 seconds. And, and things like that. And it's like, a man is, now, this is W-O-C-A, Ocala. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is W-O-C-A, Ocala, Gainesville. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. The North Korean leader Kim Jong-un hit the town for a late-night tour of Singapore ahead of his meeting with President Trump. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says... We're prepared to take actions that will provide them uh, 
sufficient certainty that they can be comfortable that denuclearization um, isn't something that ends badly for them. Indeed, just the opposite. The Trump camp meeting is scheduled to start at 9 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Following up on Saturday's G7 summit in Canada. President Trump tweeted, sorry, we cannot let our friends or enemies take advantage of us on trade anymore. After talks with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau went sour. White House trade advisor Peter Navarro accused Trudeau of stabbing the president in the back, telling Fox News Sunday. There's a uh, special place in hell. In response, the European Council's president tweeted, there's a special place in heaven for the Canadian leader. Fox's Rachel Sutherland in Washington. Fox News. You report, you decide. Ever wonder why Miller High Life is called the champagne of beers? Because it's a flavorful, easy-drinking beer with a perfect storm of tiny champagne-like bubbles. And it's been that way since 1903. If you've got the time. Welcome to the High Life. We've got the beer, Miller Beer. 2018 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Drink High Life responsibly. When posting on most job sites, you get candidates. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director you're looking for. But when you post on Indeed.com, you get the candidates just right for you. I'm a sales director with an MBA, over 10 years experience, who's also fluent in Japanese. With Indeed, you can add screener questions for a less time-consuming route to your short list of qualified candidates. Arigato. Hiring's better when you've got your short list. Save time on hiring when you post a job on Indeed. Get started today at Indeed.com slash hire. Ad Council. You're thinking about selling your home, but where do you start? Easy. Call Angie at 352-361-8359. Angie works with you to get your home sold. Angie is more than just an agent with Roberts Real Estate. She's a pro with heart. Call her at 352-361-8359, and you will know you have the right person. I'm Angie Umpleby, and I'm looking forward to working with you. When you call me at 352-361-8359. That's 352-361-8359. Sell Here is your one-minute news brief from the source, WOCA. A child was grazed by a bullet while riding in a car on I-95 in Brevard County yesterday. People shooting on private land nearby are being blamed. A small plane hit the corners of two homes in Daytona Beach before crashing into a retention pond. There were no fatalities. The arm of a 47-year-old woman killed during an alligator attack in Davie, Florida, was found inside the gator during a necropsy of the animal. A former Fort White High School soccer coach who ran away with a 7 17-year-old girl was sentenced on Saturday to 18 months in prison. And student survivors of the Parkland school shooting in February gave an emotional performance at the annual Tony Awards in Radio City Music Hall in New York City yesterday. Members of the drama department from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School sang Seasons of Love from the musical Rent. Drama teacher Melody Hertzfeld, who sheltered students in the drama room during the shooting, was presented a special Tony Award for educators. And that is your news brief from The Source. Attention WOCA listeners. Do you or someone you know have an outgoing personality with great organizational skills? Well, WOCA is looking for a few good people to join our marketing reps team. You get to meet other great people and business leaders in our community. WOCA Radio offers flexible schedules, great income potential, and some really great fringe benefits, too. So if you enjoy talking to people and getting paid to do it, this may be the right choice for you. Apply within or send your resumes. to advance at an epic pace, the one absolute certainty about them is that they'll break. It's not an if, it's a when. And when it happens, bring it to the only company in Ocala that's certified in Apple and Microsoft, Ocala Mac and PC Repair. They even offer on-site computer repair service, so they come to you. And if you do drop it off, you can check your repair status online. Ocala Mac and PC Repair is a family-owned and operated company that can do everything from mobile repair to wireless networks, fixing viruses, data recovery, even building and installing new systems. Visit online at ocalamacpc.com. In person, 1713 East Silver Springs Boulevard. Or give them a call, 352-566-8324. That's 352-566-8324. Ocala Mac and PC Repair. Hi, I'm Russ Moore with Pike Mill. Our relationship with WOCA started in 2009. WOCA is family-friendly, community-involved station. When we moved to our new location on 
17th Street in October of 2016. Of course, we went to WOCA so they could tell everybody our new location. The folks at WOCA really care about their clients and want them to be successful. For all of your shipping needs, call Pack Mill and to tell the Ocala area about your business, call WOCA because WOCA Radio gets results. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at pennflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. to do this on a Monday morning, but do you want to hear a guy about, you want to hear about somebody's problems? I mean, somebody who has real problems. I mean, I mean, I mean, just a plain old hard luck down on his luck. I mean, it's almost grapes of wrath kind of trouble. I'm not, I mean, we're not talking about a, you know, stub toe or, you know, miss flight or an eviction or death in the family. It's worse than that. It's worse than a death in the family. It is. <sighs> All right, here, I'm just going to let you have it. Everything that has gone wrong, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Everything. Everything. Now, that's, uh, that's a quote, but actually he said it more like this. Uh, every, everything that could go wrong uh, has gone wrong. Yeah. George Soros. Man... I feel bad for him. For some unknowable reason, um, people don't trust George Soros, and he's just figured this out, according to the Washington Post. He is, um, you know, all he's trying to do is just dominate the geopolitical landscape of the Western world and, you know, reign tyrannically uh, over the political systems by initiating a uh, array of, of dark, often underhanded methods like astroturfing and paid protesters and media rigging. I mean, I feel bad. I really, really do. But the ship is sailed, and uh, you better be on the boat or not on the boat. Uh, yeah, not on the boat, George. Not on the boat. Apparently, a lot of people in the world are not on the boat. It's weird. Throughout the Western world, despite Soros's nauseatingly multi uh, comma monetary contributions to the causes against the free world, a right-leaning sentiment has been spreading. Um, they don't want his global world. It's weird. Apparently, he said, telling the Washington Post, I was living in my own bubble. No, you in a bubble? Come on. George, don't say that about yourself. No, you're living in a bubble? What? All fat, old white men that look like you? Marry beautiful young women. It's not. It No, that happens all the time. It's not your money. It's nothing like that. Oh, man, your, your lofty, utopian, community first, you know, the gilded betterment of all mankind and, and the harmony and the little birds and, you know, world domination and all of that stuff. Oh, he says it's gone. Just like that. His greatest fear. Things that keeps him up at night. I'm I'm very afraid that uh, Donald Trump will uh, destroy the whole world. Oh, man. Stu, after a statement like that, is it not Red Hat Day for me? I mean, George saw it. My biggest problem is Donald Trump may destroy the whole world. (laughs) <laughs> it's hard not to break out the red hat for that one. <laughs> oh. Why won't we just let him destroy the Western civilization? I mean, seriously, come on, he's old. Let's just destroy Western civilization for him. I feel bad. Poor old Soros slumped into his golden throne, you know, in his mansion, like a like a villain's headquarters. I've got sharks underneath the floor of the dining room. I bet you do. It's wonderful. And you're 
sobbing there in the wad of thousand dollar bills, each one no longer good. I mean, it was a good idea. I I liked it to have your face there on the on the on the front of the thousand dollar bill, George. But ah, you know what it is. Quoting the Washington Post, I think maybe I was just a little bit early. That's it. That well, you're right. You and just early. You were 20 years ahead of your time. Oh. It's Monday, June 11th. This is the Glenn Beck program. Maybe a just little bit early or late. May have been like 78, 79 years late. I'm just saying. Welcome to the program. Hello, Stu. How are you? Pretty well. How about yourself? Oh my! Oh my, mm. my gosh! Did you see anything this weekend? You see any movies or anything? No, no, no. Well, you don't not. really do that. Yeah, I do. I'm a movie pass, a proud movie pass subscriber. You're not. You're a rookie. I'm costing them lots and lots of money. Yeah. As, uh, unfortunately, I'm not alone in that. So I'm really, I, I'm really bummed. I, you know, we were, I, I couldn't go to any movies. We were uh, finishing the uh, the book uh, this weekend, uh, and I think you're going to really like it. It's called um, uh, <laughs> uh, "Addicted to Outrage." I haven't seen the cover yet, so, uh, but it's "Addicted to Outrage," and uh, I think you're really going to like it. It's going to come out in the fall. Um, so I didn't get a chance to go see. You know, I wanted to see Ocean's Eight, and I really wanted to see. Jurassic Park, but I hear that thing is a nightmare. I am not interested in seeing Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park? The last one I thought was, we went to see it together, I think, didn't we? I don't remember. Me, you, and Pat, and I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I, we dragged kind of liked it. I kind of liked it. I mean, it's fun. It's a popcorn movie. Yeah. This one apparently is, is just nothing but social justice stuff. To the point where you're like, can can one of the the dinosaurs just eat that guy? Can somebody would a dinosaur please come and eat Jeff Goldblum? And I mean in real life, don't you think? <laughs> real life, yeah. we, just, we could have a pterodactyl just swoop down. Rah! I can't wait no, for the headlines of Glenn Beck <laughs> encourages dinosaurs to come eat Jeff Goldblum. I think anything Jeff Goldblum is in is going to wind up being that way, right? Yeah, Isn't that kind is. of his yeah, shtick? Yeah. yeah. That's uh, why there's times, even in, you know, even in like uh, Independence Day, I was hoping. <laughs> I think this isn't even part of the this film. Why is this I'm happening? praying for a pterodactyl to uh-huh. swoop down and, and <laughs> take him off in his beak. Uh, no, I did not. Uh, I did not. The Ocean's Eight one is weird too. It was a, a female cast, right? I guess that makes. Oh my god! That makes You're kidding me. That's oof. I guess that makes sense. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that, Stu? Well, first of all, I didn't. I said. I said. Believe I said. You it's said a it female weird. cast. Was no, the word. you said it was weird. It was weird. Something. There's something weird too. It's a. First of all, it's a female cast. It is weird, right? It's a. <laughs> it's a. Mo- like it's a. You know, someone pointed out that it would be great if it, it would have been a great movie if it was just its own movie. Why does it have anything to do with the Ocean's series? Because <laughs> she's the. Br- she's, her brother is Danny Ocean. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You don't follow these things. Uh, was she, was was this previously disclosed? No, no. It's just like they're just like, oh, hey, we've got a bunch. Of, it's like the Ghostbusters thing, right? Which was I thought also weird because it was a female cast. Period. Um, and that like wow. you're just like you're you're just like, Listen hey, we got this thing sitting or this oceans thing. We got rights to it. Should we do something with it? Yeah, throw it. We got any women? Yeah, throw them all in there. Have them do the same movie. Now a lot of people will say, uh, Glenn, there's a lot of things going on in the world. There and there are, there are, and um, you know, let's let's get right to trade, shall we? The G uh, the G eight summit. Sure. Uh, there was uh, there was a real dust up, and, and in fact, let's uh, go to uh, Larry Kudlow and uh, what he said happened between Justin Trudeau and uh, the president of the United States. One, he's not going to allow other people to suddenly take pot shots at him hours before that uh, summit. And, and and number two, uh, Trudeau should have known better. Right. Well, Trudeau, why, why pick a public Trudeau fight with betrayed. a friend to impress an enemy? Okay, stop for a second. Stop for a second. Can we? Yeah, I just I just want to hear from Justin Trudeau. Here here is Justin Trudeau and uh, what he said. You have do you have it, Sarah? 
I have consistently stood up for Canadian interests, consistently oh. uh, demonstrated uh, where we disagree, but done so in a uh, polite and cordial context. And I minute. think that's... Hold on just a second. For the audience, can you just pause for a second? For the audience uh, who happens to be watching the show, uh, <laughs> the big controversy is... is the Justin Trudeau. I mean, I, I want to talk about trade. Do I want to talk about trade? Stu, do you want to talk about trade? Oh, I love talking sure, trade. Sure, we want to talk about trade. Justin I, uh, Justin Trudeau's eyebrow appears to be falling off. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that it is, but I'm, you know, not, I'm not saying that it's... Not saying it. I'm not not saying it. That's de- definitely... This is what you got out of the G7? This is really the only part I really cared about. <laughs> the eyebrow the falling eyebrow off. The eyebrow falling Which off, it, yeah. Apparently, he's got basically a two-tone eye- eyebrow. Oh, does he? Oh, I mean, they showed many other pictures mm-hmm. of his eye in which the bottom seems a lot darker Ooh, like than that the top. Can't be, like, that can't be doctored and faked. It could be. You're right, I mean, that Alex could be Jones. A, you're could, correct. That it could, could be, be doctored. De- and- I'm not saying it is, but I'm not not saying it either. Look, man, I'm a doctor. I know eyebrows. Okay? Doctors? I'm, no. a, do- I'm a doctor. You're an eyebrow Doctor, I'm a doctor or... of humanities, which means I cover everything. Okay, that's not what it means. I'm pretty sure it is. So, I, as a as a doctor, as a surgeon, mm-hmm. if you will, I'm looking at that eyebrow, thinking, "No, he's glued those on. No matter what kind of evidence comes out, I'm just saying, as a surgeon, are you a surgeon? No. Washington Post, are you surgeons? Are you a doctor? No. I'm a doctor of humanities. I'm telling you, I've looked at a lot of." Human, human, humanity, humans, eyebrows, mm-hmm. and uh, that one, there's trouble. Now, I don't know if it's because he's an alien race. <laughs> could be. Could be. Well, if it is, then you're not an expert. You're not an expert in that's why I say, humanities. C- right. That's why I say could be. I don't know. Well, if it could be, then you're not actually identifying I'm the problem. just saying that if he is a human, which I'm not saying he's not. But I'm not not saying it either. But who are we going to ask? You're the one who's saying you're an expert on humanities. Right. So you're the one who should I'm be able to identify to, I, whether. Look, I don't want to go out on a limb and speak where I am not an expert. Okay. I am not an expert on alien life. And so if Justin Trudeau is in fact an alien, which could be. Okay. I am not the guy to come to. I don't know who that is. But you need a doctor of alien life. I'm a doctor of humanities. So I can speak to him as if he's human. Okay, and but you can't tell, even though you have a doctorate in not this topic. An examination. That you it would be it would be wrong of me. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would be it would be shameful. I've taken an oath. So you can you can identify his eyebrow problem without a without a yes, but I can't examination. Tell he, I can't tell if he's human. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has several human traits, but I can't definitively declare without an examination. You anyway, you don't want to talk about the trade deficit. At all. We, the fact that we have a trade surplus with Canada. Do we, we do not have a trade deficit with Canada at all. They also I, have lower tariffs than we do overall. No, I, I, you don't want to talk about any of that stuff. You want to talk about I'm his a eyebrows. doctor, man. I, I mean, I'm very seriously concerned about his eyebrows. I mean, what condition, what kind of, it could be mental illness mm-hmm. that causes you to tape eyebrows, you know, could be. You don't, want, be. you don't want to talk about North Korea that's going on, right? You know, the, the first face-to-face meeting, it's going to be one-on-one with just translators there, which isn't actually well, one-on-one. That's more like two-on-two, two on two, but yeah. still, that's yeah. going to be the first meeting. And that's how they're going to be discussing this. You don't want to talk about that. You want to talk about his eyebrows or? Well, I mean, we, look. I mean, he started with movies. We talked about Donald Trump's <laughs> hair for a while. Why don't we? I mean, you don't think that it's... I mean, I don't know. Okay, look at that. Honestly, look at the eyebrow. I want you, if you're at home and you haven't seen the eyebrow shot, just just take a look at the video. Watch, play the rest of the video for those who are watching here, Sarah. Just take, taste is taken and, and play the rest if we can. We're going to do. Wow, see, that see? last part. Consistently God, stood up for look Canadian this. interests. Consistently it's falling uh, demonstrated off. Uh, where we disagree, but done so in a... Uh, polite and cordial context. I think that's what Canadians have always expected of me, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Notice the way he said cordial, too. He, cordial. he may be he may be alien. He may be alien. Like he's not familiar with the word cordial, so he just is pronouncing it. He just said it differently. It was cordial? Just, it just, he just said it differently. And you notice that as a doctor of humanities. Is speech not a part of the human experience? You don't even know if he's human, according to you. 
No, that's what I'm saying, but I'm not not saying it either. Anyway, we could go through with the fact that right. when we have a trade deficit is when our economy is doing well. And when we have a trade surplus with the world, we are in recession. We could go through that. I don't understand that. I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. What, 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 what do you mean by that? I mean that people complain about the trade deficit, but when we're yeah. in... Where we're in trade surplus, uh -huh. that only is occurring when we're in deep recession. Well, so it's not something we necessarily want to strive for. Okay, all right, you're smarter. You're smarter than everybody else. Okay, so go ahead and tell me why that's why that sells too. Because, well, I mean, because it means that we have more desire for other people's goods than they have for ours, right? So if we have lots of stuff, like for example, do you have more desire to go out and buy things when you have lots of money in your bank account? The answer to that, of course, is yes, and it works the other way as well. We're having tough times. It reverses. We actually a trade deficit if for the past 40 years has been a sign of real, really uh, encouraging economic signs, not not negative ones. But uh, you want to talk about it? Well, no, I just, just I know I'm just looking at your eyebrows now. I mean, your eyebrows, my eyebrows seem fine. Mm. I wouldn't say they're Are you a doctor. I'm not a doctor. Well, I am. Okay. So let me let me let me do the eyebrow talk here. I think. Why don't you make an appointment? Come in and see me around two o'clock this no, afternoon. I'll I, squeeze you in. I'm going to do everything I can to avoid that. The FBI has issued an urgent request to reboot your uh, your home or your office internet router right now. I just don't think that is. I mean, really, that's what we have. That I mean, that's your advice. It looks like. You know, thousands of routers have already been compromised. It's malware, malware called the uh, VPN filter, and it's collecting information passing through your router. And so the FBI solution is, I don't know, have you unplugged it? Have you turned it on and off? That, that's your solution? Could I have a, may I just say, go ahead, turn it on and off, because that's what they, but... With all the things that are going on in the world, um, I'm not going to just take that one and just say, oh, yeah, turn it on and off. That's a good idea. I'm going to go with LifeLock. LifeLock Identity Theft Protection now has the power of Norton Security for added protection. LifeLock uses proprietary technology to help protect against identity theft, like your, you know, the information for sale on the dark web, your information. Norton helps protect against the online threats like ransomware. So if you have a problem on either one of those areas, they have the experts that are going to fix it. Now, nobody can stop all cyber threat or prevent all identity theft. But now with LifeLock with Norton Security, they can uncover the threats that you might otherwise miss. And now you can join for the first year and get an additional 10% off the low price starting at $7.99, $7.99 a month plus sales tax. Look, I'm a doctor. Are you a doctor? Because I'm a doctor. All right. And I'm just telling you one out of one doctors recommend you go to lifelock.com right now and order the, uh, the lifelock service for $7.99 a month. Lifelock.com promo code Beck. That's lifelock.com promo code Beck. Looking for a great Father's Day present? Then bring the whole family to the Rights and Responsibilities Exhibition presented by the Mercury Museum. Take a glimpse of what the world was like before men had rights and tyrants ruled. Join us Father's Day weekend, June 15th through the 17th, here at Mercury Studios in Dallas. Get your tickets at mercuryone.org slash museum 2018. Glenn Beck Mercury. Hiring is really challenging, but there is one place you can go where hiring is simple, fast, and smart. A place where growing businesses connect to qualified candidates. That place is ZipRecruiter.com slash Beck. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over a hundred of the web's leading job boards, but that's not all they do. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes. They find the people with the right experience and invite them to apply to your 
job. ZipRecruiter. It's so effective that 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. And with results like that, it's no wonder why ZipRecruiter is the highest rating hiring site in America. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address. It's ZipRecruiter.com slash Beck. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash B-E-C-K. ZipRecruiter.com slash Beck. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Hey, Adam, those burgers going to be done before summer's over? <laughs> Maybe. Why? You got big plans for the summer? Not really. Just the usual kids hanging around the house. How about you? Actually, I'm having Joshua get his pilot's license this summer. What? Is he old enough? Can you really do that in just the summer? Yeah. You can get your pilot's license at 17, and the summer is plenty of time. Plus, this could be the start to his career as an airline pilot. That is a great idea. I bet Tyler would love that. Actually, I would too. You guys should do it. I don't have time for that. Some of us have to work for a living, you know? <laughs> Not you. No. Seriously. They work Work around your schedule. Really? That's cool. Where are you going? Ocala Aviation at the airport off 60th. How'd you hear about it? I heard about it on the radio, then I stopped in. I've got a card if you want the number. Yeah, hold on. Let me get my phone. Hurry up. The burgers are burning. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. 861-7484. Hold on. I missed a number. Yeah, such a slacker. Here it is again. 861-7484. Excellent. I'm going to call them now. How about we eat before you start your new adventure? That's probably a good idea. You think? Ocala Business Leaders Incorporated is a group of independent local firms providing a wide range of quality goods and services. Each firm strives to maintain the highest level of professional integrity and 100% customer satisfaction. When you're looking for goods and services, call a member of the Ocala Business Leaders and we are confident you will be pleased with the results. If you are interested in becoming a member of the Ocala Business Leaders, join us at the Ocala Elks Lodge, 25th Avenue in Ocala, any Wednesday at 7 a.m. and enjoy a breakfast on us. For more information, check OcalaBusinessLeaders.com. Keep up with what's going on in the downtown area with Ocala Downtown Newspaper. Delivering thousands of newspapers to businesses in the downtown area, Ocala Downtown is there to keep you informed. They even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about it. It's simple. For more info, just call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223, and pick up your copy of the Downtown Ocala Newspaper today. And now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper online. Glenn Beck. All right. Welcome back to the program. It is Monday. We should get serious about some things. So, can we be serious for a minute? Sure. Still? Okay. Yeah, I think that's I know I've it's kind obviously of a big if, news day and a lot of things are going on. I know I have been joking around a lot, but talked about movies just, and eyebrows so far. Well, but it'd be nice. To, I, ju- I would like to. I would like to get serious on one thing. Okay. Come on, look at the eyebrow. <laughs> that is falling off. It's falling off. Don't you think? Seriously, don't you think? I think this is what America needs right now. Isn't I think we need to blow off some steam and make fun of a politician from another country that we don't really care about. I don't care about him at all. At all. At all. But you seem I don't to care be about his policies. I don't care about anything about him. You seem to care about his eyebrows. I do. I do care about his eyebrows. So it's not at all. You don't care well, about Well, I all. mean, the eyebrows are a pretty low item. Well, until they start falling off, then they're then they go kind of then they're like boom right up at the top. Then you're like then you can't listen to him anymore because then you're like then once you focus on the eyebrows, you're like it does. It looks like it's falling off. Come on, that's fake. There's a low priority item just happens to be your singular focus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think yes. I think I'm going to go with yes on it. Well, also that and George Soros. George Soros being depressed. Very sad. Very, very sad. We're all broken up no, about it. it. Mm-hmm. No, he's depressed because his plans have been thwarted. Spooky dude's plans thwarted. Uh, yeah, he, he pulled out of a, what was it, a San Diego district attorney race he dumped a bunch of money into? <sighs> Couldn't win that one either. Might have been too early for takeover of world. <laughs> I don't know. He's already, what, in his 80s? Yeah. I don't know how early that is. Yeah. Well. It's like sprinting to the finish line. Right. Right? Well, if it's downhill, he can roll to it. <laughs> but, but I mean, I, 
I'm just saying, between the eyebrows and George Soros. Okay, we'll go another way. We'll go another way. We'll talk about your actual news. That's what you want out of life. Do that next. Glenn Beck Mercury. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. The North Korean leader Kim Jong-un hit the town for a late-night tour of Singapore ahead of his meeting with President Trump. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says... We're prepared to take actions that will provide them uh, sufficient certainty that they can be comfortable that denuclearization um, isn't something that ends badly for them. Indeed, just the opposite. The Trump-Kim meeting is scheduled to start at 9 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. Following up on Saturday's G7 summit in Canada. President Trump tweeted, sorry, we cannot let our friends or enemies take advantage of us on trade anymore. After talks with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau went sour. White House Trade Advisor Peter Navarro accused Trudeau of stabbing the president in the back, telling Fox News Sunday. There's a uh, special place in hell. In response, the European Council's president tweeted, there's a special place in heaven for the Canadian leader. Fox's Rachel Sutherland in Washington. Fox News. We report, you decide. Ever wonder why Miller High Life is called the champagne of beers? Because it's a flavorful, easy-drinking beer with a perfect storm of tiny champagne-like bubbles. And it's been that way since 1903. If you've got the time. Welcome to the High Life. We've got the beer, Miller Beer. 2018 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Drink High Life responsibly. When posting on most job sites, you get candidates. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director you're looking for. But when you post on Indeed.com, you get the candidates just right for you. I'm a sales director with an MBA, over 10 years experience, who's also fluent in Japanese. With Indeed, you can add screener questions for a less time-consuming route to your short list of qualified candidates. Arigato. Hiring's better when you've got your short list. Save time on hiring when you post a job on Indeed. Get started today at Indeed.com slash hire. Have you ever gone looking for a red, a real red crepe myrtle? I'm not talking pink or deep pink or scarlet. I mean real red. Bob Wines has them because Bob Wines Camellia Gardens has more crepe myrtles than you've ever seen in one place. And you won't believe his low prices. Crepe myrtles start at just $3.99. And when you buy the large number 20 size, like the exotic peppermints and the purples or the black diamonds, you buy one, you get one free, delivered, planted, and guaranteed. And while you're at Bob Wines, check out those hot and popular dwarf, ever-blooming red ruffle azaleas, still just $3.99. Don't miss out on their real, authentic, old-timey greenhouse, where many unusual items are 10% to 20% off. Come out this week to Bob Wines Camellia Gardens, Southeast 38th Street, daily till 4.30, Saturdays till 3, in the same blooming place since 1952. Hi, Matt Wilkerson here, your Verizon representative with news that will hum your car, make it smart and safe. How? With a new hum device by Verizon. You can rest assured you're never alone. Flat tire? Lost? Accident? For $10 a month, hum by Verizon has you covered. And I will come to you in Marion County to install the hum for free. Time to call me at 352-528-0020. Are you ready to hum along? Call 352-528-0020. On the first and third Wednesday mornings of each month at 9.05, Robert Colin will be with us from On Top of the World, Ocala's premier active adult community. Be sure to listen and be sure to call in. Speak with Robert to learn about all the exciting lifestyle and new home choices available at On Top of the World. From time to time, Robert will have guests and we're sure you will enjoy our little chat. You deserve the world and we bring it to you. So be sure to tune in on the first and third Wednesdays of each month right here on The Source, WOCA. Veterans Helping Veterans USA. 
call 352-433-2320. We help veterans and their families with limited financial assistance, counseling, employment referrals, and a food and clothing bank. You can help in making a huge difference in the veterans' lives we serve by donating food, clothing, household items, or direct financial assistance. All donations are tax deductible. Veterans Helping Veterans USA, 352-433-2320. Thank you for your attention and God bless America. With a graduate degree in management and leadership from Webster University, there will never be a better time for you to explore what's next in your career. Classes are scheduled so you can continue your normal workday routine. And the accelerated program means a new term starts about every 10 weeks. If you're looking to gain a broad general management and leadership perspective, then Webster University's management and leadership degree program is the right one for you. It's all a part of what's next at Webster University. Go to webster.edu slash manage. Accredited by ACBSP. program all right we go to um michael malice he is the author of the book dear reader the unauthorized biography of kim jong il uh from michaelmalice.com michael how are you sir good morning glenn great to be here so so the president is now with the north korean leader they're going to meet this week um what are your thoughts going into this uh I mean, it's just so exciting, frankly. This is something that is almost surreal. Uh, so many elements of this are things no one could have predicted just a couple of years ago. I mean, if, if four years ago you said that President Trump would be meeting with Kim Jong-un in Singapore, the question would be, who's Kim Jong-un? <laughs> you know, and, right. and President Trump. So the fact that these things are happening so quickly is giving me an enormous amount of hope uh, that good things will come out of this summit. And I'm also very saddened by how many people are already, you know, just basically dismissing the opportunities here just because they have such uh, contempt for the president. So, Michael, what do you expect? Well, first, let me start here. Kim Jong-un, before he left, he made sure that nobody there was going to take his position. Can you give us a little uh, little recap uh, on what happened before he left? What, what what does a guy like this have to do to make sure that somebody else doesn't oh, take sure. his country? Oh, that's very well. The first thing you have to do is murder your brother, uh, because North Korea has a constitution for display purposes only, just like many of the communist countries did, and they all you know pr- recognize freedom of speech and freedom of religion and all that Bill of Rights stuff. And of course, it's a complete sham. But North Korea is a, is unique because they have something called, and this is how demonic, and I'm using that word very carefully, this is how demonic this country is. They have something called the Ten Commandments of the great leader Kim Il-sung. Kim Il-sung is Kim Jong-un's grandfather. He was the founder of North Korea. And the Tenth Commandment states that thou shalt continue the the revolution through the generations until it is completed. And what that means is only a direct blood descendant of the great leader can take that leadership position. There's no Mike Pence there. And in fact, you know, many decades ago, when someone even asked, someone high up in the party leadership asked, well, what are we going to do when Kim Il-sung dies? To even talk about that, he was, you know, uh, sentenced to the countryside and lost his job. So there's no plan in place for if something happens to him. Uh, the only plan would have been, you know, if he had if something had a heart attack or something, uh, Kim Jong-nam, possibly his elder brother, could have been flown in to take his place, but now there's no one there, so this would be an unprecedented situation. So the idea that there would be some coup and, you know, again, like a vice president would step in, that could not happen. Um, what, so so what, is he, what is his game? Do you think that we have... We have broken him to some degree, or is he playing us? What What is your best guess? Well, I don't know if it's either of those. I, I think it's it's hard to determine what it is that he wants. At the very least, it's very clear that he wants more respect on the world stage. Uh, he's much more of an internationalist 
than his father, uh, Kim Jong-il, the dear leader, and his grandfather, certainly. Um, the fact is that he's meeting with us and with South Korea, uh, China, and uh, and Russian uh, dignitaries. Uh, this is a big break with the North Korean past. According to the North Korean ideology, the Jushi idea, they basically don't want to have to do deal with anyone else in the outside world. It's all by Koreans and for Koreans. And when you're there, it, it's, it's a very surreal feeling. It's like being in another planet because you don't know what's going on in the outside world. Um, but this, again, this is a change for him to have even left North Korea is a very big deal. Uh, Kim Jong-il would boast, why do I have to leave Pyongyang? All these world leaders come here and basically genuflect before me. So this could be going in several directions. Uh, and I'm desperately hoping that there will be positive ones. Talking to Michael Malice. Uh, Michael, the, the, there was a focus this morning I, I heard uh, a lot of, which was about the supposed change in language, where we at the uh, beginning of this were saying what we want is them to give up their entire nuclear program, uh, and then we'll talk about making things a little bit better for them. And it's changed to now the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and giving the sense that perhaps we're going to back off of our defense of South Korea as part of this. Do you think there's anything, is there any importance to that? Is that just, you know, uh, generally speaking, trying to make it the language more friendly for the North Koreans? Well, I think it's very important to, if we make concessions for both sides to be able to save face and not to make it seem like we're backing down to a show of strength. North Korea can't do that, and President Trump certainly is not the kind of person who would do that. So I, I had said this earlier, if, if their price for denuclearizing would be to get us out of South Korea, I don't think that's an unreasonable request, at the very least, because if they're you know, giving up their guns, they need some assurance that as soon as they do this, it's not a trick and we're going to come storming in. Uh, from their perspective, uh, as the title of one of their books is called, The U.S. Imperialists Started the Korean War, and we're waiting any moment to reinvade and, and conquer them and make Korea our beach quest for world conquest. This is the Korean idea, North Korean ideology. Um, so, again, it, I mean, a lot of people like to think, oh, President Trump's going to make a show of strength and they're going to completely back down and we're not going to have to do anything in exchange. That's not how negotiations work. That's basically how threats work. And my hope, and it seems that the way this is way President Trump is going, is that we will have some sort of peaceful negotiation rather than, you know, all this bluster. And I, I just want to remind the listeners again, last summer they were threatening to new Guam and in the fall they sentenced President Trump to death. So this has been a very positive progress in the direction we would like. So we're talking to Michael Malice. He's the author of Dear Reader, the unauthorized biography of uh, Kim Jong-il. Um, Michael, um, do you think we would give up? I mean, it does fit Donald Trump's, you know, uh, philosophy from years ago where, you know, it's time to bring Americans home. Why are we paying for all this? Why are we defending all these places? Do you think Donald Trump uh, would give up our position in in South Korea? Oh, I, 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 this absolutely, I think it's on the table. I don't think it's that, again, South Korea is a very wealthy country. At one point, and I'm not sure if it's still the case, very recently, they had the highest GDP in all of Asia, which is no mean feat. And there's a lot of, in, in South Korean politics, a lot of uh, contempt and hatred why the Americans still here. So I don't think it would be that much of a hard sell. Uh, I think this would be something that many people, particularly in the Republican Party and in his base, would be happy to see. Um, and it would be a very, again, if they're giving up nukes and, and we're, we're bringing the boys home and switching defense to uh, the South Korean uh, government in Seoul, uh, I don't think it would be that radical of a move on Trump's part, as you I said, Glenn, great. given how much he's been talking about these, these issues in, this, in these terms. I, I, I mean, I don't know what kind of a power vacuum uh, that uh, that causes, but uh, I'm all for bringing, you know, to stop defending these posts all around the world. As long as we have an ability to deploy if we need to, uh, if there's problems, you know, with somebody coming after us. Yeah, and, and I don't think, and this, I mean, 
China is obviously not our best friends, mm -hmm. but the idea that China is going to allow, this is Mao's China, the idea that they would allow some sort of real war on the Korean Peninsula right on their border, I think at, at this point in time, this is not the 1940s, 1950s, I think there'd be a, that would really, they'd really clamp down on it pretty quickly. Because it's, it's interesting because you, you point out the, the deepness of, of the, in the ideology that South Korea is not South Korea, right? South Korea is theirs. They own it, according to the North, well, North Koreans, right? It's Korea. Well, that, that's a little bit imprecise. So when, whenever I write about it in, and in my book, and this is, was very funny for me to see, they always refer to North and South Korea with a lowercase n and a lowercase s because mm -hmm. their claim is, and again, North Korea is the most racist, homogenous nation on Earth. Korea is the only country on Earth that has r racially pure blood. Korea was the first government on Earth, the first language spoken, and Korea is indivisible. Their slogan, wherever you go in North Korea, says Korea is one, and all the maps have a unified Korea. Therefore, South Korea is not a separate country. It is a separate region under occupation by the U.S. imperialists, and the South Korean puppet fascist regime. They've kind of backed down with the name calling vis-a-vis uh, -vis South Korea, but that is their mentality that this is a country that cannot be denied, divided and is only temporarily separated uh, due to our machination. But I guess that's my point is that once we're not there and it's no longer under, under occupation of the evil imperialist uh, Americans, I mean, yeah. it, aren't they going to be, isn't their goal going to be to undermine the South Korean government in any way possible and try to make what they've been putting on their maps a reality? Um, I, I, it, that doesn't seem to be the way that they're going. Uh, it, it, this, this was South Korea only in the, let's say in the eighties became this kind of quasi liberal democracy. Before that, they did have a series of strong men and they had, you know, uprisings just like in Tiananmen Square that were put down in the late seventies, early eighties and, and things like that. It was not a pretty place for quite a while. Uh, and, and that was part of the background for this kind of approach. Now we saw that footage. I, I mean, they do try to undermine it to a point, but South Korea has also tried to undermine the North. North, you know, with, with, you know, blasting music and, and sending information. And they've kind of agreed to lessen the rhetoric in that regard. So, and they, they don't have complete free speech. It's illegal in many cases to speak well of the North. Uh, my friend who lives in South Korea wasn't sure if my book would be allowed there uh, because <laughs> it's, it's written from the North Korean perspective, even though the point is to condemn them as, as harshly as possible. So it, it, that would be a question. But again, they, you would have China looking over their shoulder um, and it, it would not be, uh, it, it would be interesting to see what happens. There's, the there's a lot of people, Michael, that, w w um, uh, that, that say Donald Trump is being used. Uh, a lot of people that say, you know, we, he's broken the back. Who's walking into the room with the most power? Well, I, it's always the, Amer but here's the other thing. It's obviously the Americans, North Korea admits it's the Americans. They, their metaphor, this is their metaphor that they use in their literature. They are an anthill and we are an elephant. There's no way they can beat the elephant, but the ants can guide the elephant where they want it to be. But I want to point something else out. Uh, you know, people like Nancy Pelosi and, and others in, the, in, you know, in the corporate press are thinking Trump's going to go in there and be kind of bamboozled. This guy's an international real estate magnate. He's been negotiating with people for decades. Kim Jong-un at the very least is, is just a, a kid in his early 30s. I mean, the idea that he's this brilliant Machiavellian negotiator, we have no evidence mm. of this. Mm. And we certainly have seen a great deal of evidence of President Trump, at, at the very least in real estate, knowing how to schmooze people and, and be schmoozed by them. So the idea that he's going to be blindsided, especially when he has the State Department apparatchiks at his back, uh, people who are, you know, career uh, 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 government bureaucrats who are not going to be bamboozled that easily. I'm very skeptical at the idea that they're going to, you know, put one over on him and make a fool out of him. Uh, great to talk to you, Michael. We'll talk to you again as the uh, as the talks begin, uh, and uh, we'll check in with you probably again tomorrow. Thanks so much. Great pleasure, guys. You bet. Bye bye, Michael Malice, author of Dear Reader. Yeah, we should point out you kept saying Dear Reader, the uh, unauthorized biography of Kim Jong Il. You're missing something out here. This is a, is the unauthorized autobiography 
of Kim Jong Il, which uh, I don't know if there is an, such of a thing until Michael created it. The, right. The genre of unauthorized autobiographies. <laughs> well, <laughs> just not a. He didn't write one himself. <laughs> there you go. You know, so <laughs> somebody's got to do it. Mm-hmm. According to Redfin, homes have sold faster than ever in April 2018. Prices rose 7.6 percent to a new median high of 302,000. $200. Now, this is the first time the national median home price has surpassed the $300,000 mark. Jeez, if you're my age. I mean, do you remember what your folks paid for their house? Do you, do you remember? I think my I folks don't. I think my folks paid fifteen dollars or $20,000 for their house. And it was a nice house. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. $300,000. Anyway, you want your, your home to sell fast on time for the most amount of money? Trust these people. Real estate agents I trust.com. Finding the real estate agent that is right for you, knows your area, knows what your house is worth, and can help you price it to move fast. We have over a thousand agents all over America who their word is their bond, just like you. They're fans of the show. They share your sensibilities. They're all handpicked and fully vetted for their knowledge, their skill, and their track record. So try them out. Have your home sold fast, on time, and for the most amount of money. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. That's realestateagentsitrust.com. Glenn Beck Mercury. I've been talking about Bitcoin for a few years now, and I believe that blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies are the future, but man, it is a white knuckle ride. They're extremely volatile. I'm still up about eight times my investment, and if Bitcoin performs like it did in 2017, it's going to be worth 10 times more by this time next year. But I'm no expert, and there's a lot of scams out there. So I've been looking around for myself on who could educate. I found this guy named Tika Tawari. He's from Palm Beach letter. He's a former Wall Street hedge fund manager. He has arguably helped more people profit from cryptocurrencies than anybody. So he's created this course to explain what cryptos are, how they work, and which ones that he might recommend and why. I urge you to check out this exclusive Glenn Beck course at smartcryptocourse.com. Everybody I think should own at least 100 bucks in some sort of cryptocurrency, but you have to educate yourself first. That's what this course is all about. smartcryptocourse.com Attention WOCA listeners. Do you or someone you know have an outgoing personality with great organizational skills? Well, WOCA is looking for a few good people to join our marketing reps team. You get to meet other great people and business leaders in our community. WOCA Radio offers flexible schedules, great income potential, and some really great fringe benefits, too. So if you enjoy talking to people and getting paid to do it, this may be the right choice for you. Apply within or send your resumes to careers at WOCA.com. There are only a few things in life that you can be certain will always be around. Death, taxes, the pursuit of happiness, and computers. As they continue to advance at an epic pace, the one absolute certainty about them is that they'll break. It's not an if, it's a when. And when it happens, bring it to the only company in Ocala that's certified in Apple and Microsoft, Ocala Mac and PC Repair. They even offer on-site computer repair service, so they come to you. And if you do drop it off, you can check your repair status online. Ocala Mac and PC Repair is a family-owned and operated company that can do everything from mobile repair to wireless networks, fixing viruses, data recovery, even building and installing new systems. Visit online at OcalaMacPC.com. In person, 1713 East Silver Springs Boulevard. Or give them a call, 352-566-8324. That's 352-566-8324. Ocala Mac and PC Repair. Hi, I'm Russ Moore with Pike Mill. Our relationship with WOCA started in 2009. WOCA is family-friendly, community-involved station. When we moved to our new location on 17th Street in October of 2016, of course, we went to WOCA so they could tell everybody our new location. The folks at WOCA really care about their clients and want them to be successful. For all of your shipping needs, call Pack Mill and to tell the Ocala area about your business, call WOCA because WOCA Radio gets results. 
Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall -wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Ocala Business Leaders Incorporated is a group of independent local firms providing a wide range of quality goods and services. Each firm strives to maintain the highest level of professional integrity and 100% customer satisfaction. When you're looking for goods and services, call a member of the Ocala Business Leaders and we are confident you will be pleased with the results. If you are interested in becoming a member of the Ocala Business Leaders, join us at the Ocala Elks Lodge, 25th Avenue in Ocala, any Wednesday at 7 a.m. and enjoy a breakfast on us. For more information, check OcalaBusinessLeaders.com. Glenn Beck. So excited to have the uh, museum here, uh, an exhibition for some of the greatest artifacts uh, in American history and some things that are setting the record straight. We have this amazing letter. We're going to show it today on uh, TV. I was just... I was doing some research this weekend for the uh, for the book, and I kept coming across Thomas Paine stuff, where he was, you know, he's an atheist, he's an atheist, he's an atheist. No, he's not. And we have the letter uh, that he wrote to Benjamin Franklin. It, it will be here um, this weekend. Uh, you'll see it on TV tonight. But uh, Rights and Responsibilities Museum opens for the three-day showing uh, June 15th through the 17th, it's rights and responsibilities. It's, it's all about the, what do our rights mean? Where do they come from? What role do they play? How do you know when they're wrong and, and when we're violating them? Here's a tip. We're violating all of them. Um, but do you, uh, you want to see this, this, uh, museum first time we've opened up the entire studio back and front, all studios. Uh, so you can come on in and see some of the artifacts that we have for our Mercury Museum. It is our temporary pop-up ex uh, exhibition for three days. Father's Day weekend makes a great gift for Father's Day. And we will see you this weekend. Mercuryone.org slash museum 2018. Mercuryone.org slash museum 2018. You can sign up for tours with myself, with Glenn, and a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, we're, real quick, uh, tonight on TV, you're going to get a little preview of what you can see. This is just a little slice of the museum, but we're talking about three documents that I would say completely change the mainstream narrative of history yes. for three massive uh, players of American uh, her uh, heritage. This is a pretty big, uh, pretty big deal. It's a, it's, it's amazing when you just go to original sources that you're like, wait, that, but that's not what the history book teaches. That's mm -hmm. not what, it, well, here it is in their own hand proving Three things in American history that you learned completely inaccurate. We'll give you that tonight at 5 o'clock on The Blaze. And come see them for yourself. Mercuryone.org slash museum 2018. It happens this Glenn weekend. Back. Mercury. Imagine test driving a car for a hundred days. Because that's what Casper is doing by letting you try their new mattress for a hundred nights in your own home. It's a unique combination of foams that provides the right pressure relief and alignment so you feel perfectly balanced and comfortable. They ship for free in a small box, and if you don't love it, they're going to come pick it up and refund every penny. So start your Casper 100-night sleep challenge today. Go to Casper.com and use the promo code BECK. Save $50 on select mattresses. Casper.com, promo code BECK. Terms and conditions do apply. It's springtime in America, and it's also allergy time. So add this to your spring cleaning list. Replace your HVAC filters at FilterBuy.com. FilterBuy is America's leading provider of HVAC filters for homes and small businesses. They offer hundreds of sizes made in America and shipped free within 24 hours. They'll even make custom sizes. Plus, you'll save 5% when you set up auto delivery. Save money, save time, breathe better with FilterBuy.com. That's FilterBuy.com. Let's talk about your business for a minute. Think about all the things you're doing to attract the best talent. Between the networking events and referral bonuses, you're probably spending plenty of time and money to find the right people. But what if it was your office that attracted employees? 
Today's workforce is mobile and active, and they want an office designed around the way they work. And Veridesk makes it easy. Veridesk Standing Desk Solutions help you create an active workspace where employees can stand and move so they're happier, healthier, and more productive. Our full line of active office products are constructed with commercial grade materials and require little to no assembly so they're easy to set up and move. Companies of any size can have a Veridesk active workspace. Ordering is simple. Shipping is free. And our 30-day guarantee means if you don't love it, we'll pick it up for free. Learn more about Veridesk Active Workspace Solutions at veridesk.com slash radio. That's V-A-R-I-Desk.com slash radio. Here is your one-minute news brief from the source WOCA. A child was grazed by a bullet while riding in a car on I-95 in Brevard County yesterday. People shooting on private land nearby are being blamed. A small plane hit the corners of two homes in Daytona Beach before crashing into a retention pond. There were no fatalities. The arm of a 47-year-old woman killed during an alligator attack in Davie, Florida was found inside the gator during a necropsy of the animal. A former Fort White High School soccer coach who ran away with a 7 17-year-old girl was sentenced on Saturday to 18 months in prison. And student survivors of the Parkland school shooting in February gave an emotional performance at the annual Tony Awards in Radio City Music Hall in New York City yesterday. Members of the drama department from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School sang Seasons of Love from the musical Rent. Drama teacher Melody Hertzfeld, who sheltered students in the drama room during the shooting, was presented a special Tony Award for educators. And that is your news brief from The Source. Veterans Helping Veterans USA. Call 352-433-2320. We help veterans and their families with limited financial assistance, counseling, employment referrals, and food Fox News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. Other than translators, President Trump meets alone with the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It's in the morning in Singapore. White House Counsel Kellyanne Conway says... Chairman Kim must understand that... As the president has said, great things could happen in his country. The economy could be more prosperous. The people could be more free. She was on Fox and Friends. The Supreme Court rules 5-4 Ohio can purge people from voter rolls who haven't voted for six years, haven't told the state they moved, and don't reply to a response card. Civil liberties groups argued Ohio violated the National Voter Registration Act when it removed thousands of people from voter rolls. In the majority opinion, Justice Samuel Alito wrote that Ohio's process does not strike any registrant solely by reason of the failure to vote. Instead, it removes registrants only when they have failed to vote and have failed to respond to a change of residence notice. Fox's Rachel Sutherland. Fox News. We report, you decide. Ever wonder why Miller High Life is called the champagne of beers? Because it's a flavorful, easy-drinking beer with a perfect storm of tiny champagne-like bubbles. And it's been that way since 1903. If you've got the time. Welcome to the high life. We've got the beer, Miller Beer. 2018 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Drink high life responsibly. When posting on most job sites, you get candidates. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director you're looking for. But when you post on Indeed.com, you get the candidates just right for you. I'm a sales director with an MBA, over 10 years experience, who's also fluent in Japanese. With Indeed, you can add screener questions for a less time-consuming route to your short list of qualified candidates. Arigato. Hiring's better when you've got your short list. Save time on hiring when you post a job on Indeed. Get started today at Indeed.com slash hire. Here is your one-minute news brief from the source WOCA. A child was grazed by a bullet while riding in a car on I-95 in Brevard County yesterday. People shooting on private land nearby are being blamed. A small plane hit the corner.